All right, folks, welcome back to Dustin Disc. And in this video, I'm taking you back to where it all started for me in disc golf. This is the University of South Alabama, my alma mater, where I got my bachelor's and master's degree from. Tracy also got her bachelor's degree from here. And uh, it is the first course I ever played. I played it many years ago. A friend introduced me to disc golf, and this is the course he took me to. And while the course is a bit different today than it was back then, a lot of it is still the same and very familiar to me. And so I kind of want to take you back and uh, trip down memory lane, I guess, in a way. I didn't play regularly back then, uh, only here and there. I only started playing regularly about a year ago or so. Uh, but it's nice to come back to this course and see how I play it now compared to how I played it 10 or so years ago. But yeah, we're going to start off on hole one. And, uh, you know, you have a water carry shot to kick it off, but it's fairly open. It's really hard to see the basket down there. I do apologize for that. These baskets are quite old, uh, but it's basically about 380 feet. Just got to stay in the fairway. Uh, it plays uphill, though, so it may play a little bit longer than 380. But uh, let's see what we can do. Well, it's a little high and it faded a bit too much, but it should be up there to at least approach for a par. This is kind of a bonus birdie for me anyway, due to the distance and the uphill slope. I don't really have the arm to get there, but it should set me up for a nice approach for par. Fishy. Yeah, now you can see our glorious koi pond as we have to walk all the way around to this bridge to get up the fairway. Also, Tracy didn't film my best shot, so it feels bad. We'll show you when we get up there. Sorry. I took a few different throws. I always throw kind of a few extras off the first tee just because I didn't get to warm up before we started. All right, so yeah, I definitely did that a bit too high because I really wanted to avoid rolling it over into the opposite side of the fairway, which I, is like often a mistake that I make on this hole. So I wanted to make sure I stayed in the fairway. I almost went to the woods here on the opposite side though, but I got up here probably about, I don't know, like 320 feet or so. Uh, not quite pin high, but definitely outside. Uh, so it's gonna be kind of a long putt. But uh, like I said, I'm really just mostly trying to get a par on this hole because the distance isn't quite birdieable for me. So I'm also staring directly into the sun, so that's always fun. In fact, it's really hard to see up against that tree line. So. Yep, that's right under the basket for a par. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to see the other holes a little bit better. This one's always really hard to see. All right, so hole two is another tough 320-foot uh, par three, a little bit shorter than the first hole, but a lot more tree covers. There's basically kind of a tunnel you have to get down and get towards the basket, but also it's a low ceiling. So you have to try to keep something at the appropriate height so you don't uh, clip that. So usually you can throw a forehand towards the bushes or you can try to throw some type of backhand turnover towards the bushes to get a little bit of extra distance. But this is again, one of those holes that I'm not even thinking about birdieing. I'm just trying to get down there. Yep, just threw a backhand turnover to make sure I could set up an approach for the par. All right, so we made it up here perfectly. Again, this low ceiling behind, if Tracy shows it, is just something you really gotta make sure you get under. Uh, it's just that overhanging branch, basically. Um, so I just had to get under that, which I was able to accomplish. So, you know, it's kind of like a really long putt. But uh, again, this was mostly just playing for par, but we'll give it a little run, see if we can maybe get something. not expecting anything though. All right, so sorry for technical difficulties on the last hole. Uh, for some reason, the video froze midway through the putt, but it did land under the basket pretty much for a par tap in, so I'm still even par on the round. Kind of what I expected for those first two holes. I'm always going par, par there, and I'm happy with that. Now we're on hole three. And this is a birdieable hole, but it's also very tricky. It's only 235 feet. There's a very tight tunnel. And if you miss at all to the right, you're going to go into a really deep cement dench, which is out of bounds. So really, if you're going to miss, you want to miss left, but you really just got to try to make sure you go down there dead straight, give yourself a chance. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Ooh, I don't know. I might have found like one of those little holes that are down there that are like on the ditch line. So I don't know if I fell into that hole and fell into the ditch or if I stayed in bounds. But I think I'm at least short for sure. But we'll see once we get down there. So that's where I landed, which is technically not out of bounds, but also seems very dangerous. So... I have to be really careful here just to make sure I don't just bust my butt. All right, so I'm technically behind my line. I'm putting. But uh, this is a really tough straddle putt situation for me. But, you know, not dying is kind of the main goal at this point rather than making the putt. 
Yeah, whatever. I'll take the par. <laughs> Keep my life safe. All right, so now we're going to be at hole number four. This is a shorty. Uh, it's just something you got to throw dead straight kind of over this little hill. I think it's less than 200 feet. I'm not 100% sure. And actually behind us, if we look this way, is actually where I used to live when I went to school here at the University of South Alabama. The building's new. They tore down my building and built up a new big one. But yeah, I used to be able to basically walk out to the course when I went to school here. So a little trip down memory lane as we uh, try to see if we can get a birdie here. This is one of the more birdieable holes, I would say. Probably one of the easiest holes on the course. So it's one you really want to get. Yep, and that's right under the basket for a birdie. Love to see it. All right, so now we're at hole five, 275 feet. And basically, we're just trying to take this lane to the right-hand side, uh, right to the right of that big tree there in the center of the fairway, and then have it fade to the left towards the end, towards the basket. Uh, so maybe you can throw, like, something a bit overstable on a bit of an anhyzer to get the flex and then come back. Uh, or you can just try to go something straight at it and just have it fade at the end, so... Quite the awkward approach here. Kind of pop a little, little flick out there. Ugh. Well. I didn't even see that dude. <laughs> but I should be able to get the uh, par from there. This is not my first real putt of the day. All the other ones have been tapping. So. Don't expect great things from my first putt of the day. I didn't even warm up, so. Just making excuses, of course. Got to, right? Nope, that's gonna be a bogey, so I'm back to even par. All right, so now we're at hole six, 285 feet, uphill, tight tunnel, and for some reason they thought, you know what would be a great idea? You know, let's make this hole difficult already by having this crazy tree overhanging mm -hmm. across the fairway and tight tunnel but let's just put a fence right in front of the basket <laughs> so i mean unless you just throw the most perfect shot on the planet you're taking a par on this hole probably but you have to have the perfect height to get under this tree push up and then get through that fence or over it so <laughs> prepare for embarrassment I don't know actually, it might be okay. <laughs> so I'm in the woods. I feel like I'm gonna be doing that a lot today. I have to go for the old saddle bus. I've never room for anything else. Hey. It's gonna be a par. Keeps me at even. All right, now we're at hole seven, 230 feet, and this one's a real doozy. Uh, basically, if you look down the fairway, you see that pole that's sticking out the center of the ground? Yep. That's basically trying to tell you where pin high is. And so essentially, you have to throw something basically at that pole and then have it skip left down the hill towards the basket. It's a short hole, but you do have to keep your disc really low, and then you have to make sure you get a nice skip downwards, uh, not hitting any of these trees on your way down to try to set up for a birdie putt. So it's a tough one. I've seen some people go for some crazy, like overhand over the tree lines and have it kind of drop down like a mega grenade or like a tomahawk or something like that. But I personally just throw something kind of low, maybe a bit over the road and have it fade left at the end. I got hung up on the trees. <laughs> it might have been alright actually. First time I ever throwing an overhand on the channel. I don't throw them very often because they hurt your shoulder and I'm not good at them. But it actually landed over there. I don't know if you can see it. Which actually was a better spot to putt from than where I'm at. It's further, but there's a straighter line of the basket. So it actually wasn't a bad option. It's gonna be tough. Nice nope. 
It's gonna be another par. All right, so now we're at hole eight, par three, 360 feet. And we have basically two real options on this hole. You either try to go dead straight and low and just try to go straight up the middle of the fairway. But that requires perfect height control and a lot of chances to mess up and hit a limb and get knocked straight down to the ground. So what I do, because I know I don't have the arm to get there anyway, is I throw something over this water, kind of straight and kind of high, and I'm gonna have it plow in on a hyzer angle in the left and try to dig in the ground somewhere a little bit further up uh, the fairway and just try to set myself up to approach the par. This is where you just, you know, play position, try to play smart golf rather than trying to get everything. That's exactly what I wanted. So, I mean, here's where I wound up. Again, I knew I wasn't going to really get up there with that kind of throw, but it kept me in the fairway and stopped me from hitting one of those overhanging limbs and being way, way short. Yep, so that's right next to the basket to so go ahead and tap in my par. And so, we move on to the last hole of the front nine at even par. All right, so now it's time for the last hole of the front nine. It is a 225 foot par three entirely over water, except for maybe the last 50 to 70 feet once you get to the other side. Um, so yeah, it's definitely birdieable, but this place tricks your mind a bit with that water. Always gives you a little bit of added stress. Oh my lord. Uh, well done, man. Uh -huh. I would have lost my tree. So I thought God or something had just told me I had an incredible. Did you see that guy who was just hiding up in the tree? No. I didn't even notice, bro. Like, I'm glad I didn't notice him as I was throwing. I would have had a jump scare and thrown it in the water. <laughs> that was unbelievable. Just scared the crap out of me. I thought we'd have a little bit of a chat as we walk up to the last hole of this front nine. Again, on the front nine, usually if I'm having a good round here, I'll be like two or three under heading into the back nine. Unfortunately, I took like a really terrible bogey on, uh, I think that was what, like hole five? Yeah, I think I so. After I hole four. So I could have been at that minus two marker because I'm absolutely parked right here. This is, what's happened. I almost put it in the basket, I feel like. It faded a little bit too far to the left just at the very end. But it was a really, really good throw. So, this is this is where you saw the bunny at one day. I did I did pet a wild rabbit here one time. Yeah, it was like right there. Yeah, it was pretty wild. So uh, doesn't really get much better than this. So that's gonna do it here for the front nine. I'm at one under par going to the back nine, but things get really tough over there. Uh, really really difficult holes coming up and uh, should be a good time though. Again, if you enjoyed the videos here, please go ahead and follow, subscribe, leave a comment, feed that algorithm, help me grow the channel. Uh, we have a new custom URL now. That's pretty awesome. So now you can just go to youtube.com slash Dustin Disc instead of having to type in that crazy random letter combination. So it's a little bit easier to share the channel now if you would so choose to do so, which I hope you do. And yeah, see you on the back nine just a bit.